Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and today we're talking about MRT3 Okay, I'm sure you guys are very familiar with MRT3 and before that it was cancelled but now it has been revived and since July it has been approved that the government is going to build this project MRT3 so congratulations to all of us so we're able to see this probably after 7 years because the expected date of completion is 2032 that's only a 7 years from now okay, it's not too long in my opinion and also the whole distance is 51.6 kilometers and the project cost is 45 billion ringgit that's estimated cost so uh, before that right they mentioned about around 60 billion but now it has been okay cut down made a downsize all the way until 45 billion ringgit because they want to save cost right okay in fact it's one of the most expensive projects in malaysia for infrastructure project but i think that why this circle line is so important Okay, um, it's very common. You see there are quite a few major cities like for example, Beijing, Shanghai, Tokyo, or Taiwan, or even Singapore, right? Our neighbors, you will see that they have this circle line. Okay, let's take a look of uh, LTA. Okay, this is Singapore MRT. You see there's a circle line here. Okay, so there's a circle line here. And also for Beijing subway, there are a few loops or circle lines. And also Tokyo Yaman Yamanote, there's also like a circle line here. Alright, even Moscow Metro also has circle lines. Okay, but the thing is, why do they need circle line? It's very simple. They want to better connect the whole system. Because they already have existing MRT line, right? So that's why you need circle line to produce some kind of uh, more interchange stations. They cut through more existing lines so that more people can uh, do interchange for all the stations. And it's easier for people to move around from south urban areas to to city center or vice versa okay that's why they need circle line and it's a very important concept and okay they don't do this for nothing and that's why it's expensive because they're going to build at the center of the city that's very expensive you you need land acquisition all this kind of stuff okay that will cost you a lot of money and also time that's why kudos to the team who have been doing consolidation doing all these things to make sure that this project is finally approved since last year right they have this uh, feedback session, okay? They have this feedback session to collect feedback from the uh, public. Okay, that's why you see some booths at some MRT station, right? The purpose is to get feedback from the public about what they think about this MRT trip project. And also from there, right, they will better craft the whole blueprint and also the line of MRT trip. You see, right, okay, if you look deeper, this is actually the MRT line. Alright, this is actually the MRT circle line. And here, right, this the whole okay MRT system, including LRT, KTM, and so on. So if you look deeper, right, you see that they will cut through a lot of stations, okay, or the existing line. Like for example, this one, right, you see, this is actually the um another major interchange station. And also here, right, you see there's Satya Wangsa, okay, so it's going to connect to Gombak, and also Suriampai area. What else? Okay, Panda Inda. What else? Okay, Taman Mida. Okay, this is actually nearby, if I'm not mistaken, Chan Saolin is here, right? Okay, so it's Chan Saolin is nearby his Cheras. Okay, this area Cheras. So it's also providing access to all this area. So can you imagine, right, you are already staying in this area? And also you are staying in this area? Or you are staying in this area? Okay, even you are staying in this area. And here, you see, there are also quite a lot of uh, interchange stations here. Okay, Bukit Kiara Selatan and also yeah a few Pantai Dalam okay this is going to connect to the KTM but here okay Kuchai and also Salak Selatan okay this is also very important because there is a terminal there okay for the buses you see right these are a few areas they are talking about okay with this circle line it's quite big you know it's going to connect to this area this area this area and many other areas even the southern part here Kajang Right, so there's a bus terminal here and Salah Selatan here. So basically, they are going to be a main a connecting point to connect people from city center and also to outskirts or vice versa. So you see that circle line is so important, right? Because they want to encourage you to take public transport, and that's why, as a commuter, hopefully, there'll be more interchange stations so that you can change to other parts easily, more conveniently, and of course, faster. Alright, so okay, you look at Singapore, right? You see there's a circle line to connect Green Line, Blue Line, uh, okay, Thompson East Coast Line, Red Line, and this um purple line and so on. You see, 
Basically, they connect all the existing line, they cut through everything. So this part right, is yet to be completed, and if I'm not mistaken, it should be around 2027 or 2026 to complete this uh, remaining part here. So there will be a full circle. Okay, let's look at Beijing. Okay, you look at Beijing, right? There are a few loops. One, the blue line, and this one, the small one. You see? So there are actually two circle lines. And the reason is that they want to better facilitate the movement of people from outside to inside or inside to outside because Beijing has more than 20 million people so you see it's quite congested and they are doing all this and if you look at some other cities like for example Moscow Metro you are able to see that Moscow Metro right, also have circle line you see this is also a circle line here oops I'm sorry I, it's not showing they are showing some stations <laughs> okay yeah you see, you see right here is the, actually the circle line you know they're going to connect all the existing line here as well Okay, so it's very exciting to see this happening in Malaysia as well and after so many years. In fact, it's been cancelled. Then now they revive and they restart the project. Okay, if you look at this, right? Okay, there are quite a lot of stations here. And yeah, so hopefully this project becomes a reality, of course, for the next seven years. And the first thing is, of course, to ease the congestion. And the second thing is to reduce a public reliance on public cars or on private cars, sorry, not public cars private cars so that they encourage them to take public transport that's a huge amount of money and let's hope that they're even going to build the high-speed railway project and although they have been cancelled this because it's quite expensive right and okay, I think it's a good way to build better connectivities between countries especially from KL all the way to Singapore and I, I still feel like it's a good project although it's expensive and not sure whether the private sector is going to fund it if they're funny, right, definitely you need like support or incentive from the government to allow these companies to enjoy some benefits so, so that they can they are involved in this project. Okay, so let's hope for let's hope that there will be some changes for the high speed railway project. And actually it's still pending. So there's yet to be like any updates regarding on the high speed railway. But the circle line is now confirmed. Okay, so what I think about the idea of having circle line in Malaysia. So are you excited about this as well? And it's going to be more than one hour to commute the whole circle line. That would take around, yeah, that's it's more than one hour actually to travel the whole circle line in around 50 kilometers. That's quite long. Can you imagine that? Okay, so what I think about the project MRA3, and are you excited to see this after seven years? So don't forget to subscribe for more content like this and see you in the coming videos. Bye bye.